And now, live from Laurel, Maryland, USA, home of the FCC Laurel Monitoring Station, it's snack time. Today, I welcome you, and today I've got two new family members to add to the mix. Nigger White Opie and Nigger White James. They have been on the, on the, the chair of judgment quite a few times now. We've talked about the whole closet story with Nigger White Opie and Nigger White James and, and Smurf. And we've, we've talked about the roofing stories and, and smoking sh crack in Shrana's car. And I now have starting to get complaints from my other cousins, the female, their sisters, Tammy and Shelly, are starting to feel left out. They feel unloved. And that's why on today's Snack Boy, yes, it's back to family time. And yes, not only family time, but we're going to show you Tammy and Shelly. Uh, as I've said, Nigger White James, his sister's name is Shelly, and Nigger White Opie, a.k.a. Charlie, his sister is Tammy, and Tammy's a little older. Well, back in the mid-80s, early 90s, they were all living in the same house for reasons which my aunts would probably not appreciate me telling. I'll tell you on another show. And in that house, the girls had to learn to A, be friends, and B, share what they had. Now, I have a brother. You all know I have a brother, Kenny, from seminary, and I know that oftentimes it's not fun to share things with your siblings. I don't like it when my brother even, you know, comes in my room and watches my TV. So I can completely understand the following snack. Let's get to it. <laughs> all right. You see, Tammy was older than Shelly. Let me paint the picture. Tammy, a beautiful young girl with feathered brown hair, just, just as feathered as can be. And she always wore a little gold locket, kind of like ever since she saw Little Orphan Annie as a little girl, and a lot of really big baggy 70s sweaters. She's kind of the girl you picture roller skating quite a bit. Shelly is a little younger. She's got um, that bad, big, perm dyed hair, and she was a cheerleader at Manassas High School. And one day, she had ran out of clean underwear. She wasn't one to do her laundry often. And and instead of wash a load of clothing, she had to get to school, and she was wearing, wearing her little her cheerleading skirt. And as we all know, if that kind of thing flies up, you can see all sorts of snatch and all sorts of things that might get you thrown right out of school. So she went into Cousin Tammy's drawer and liberated, liberated a pair of panties. So she wore them to school, and she got away with it. All day long, she wore the panties. And things were working quite well, really, with this kind of borrowing thing until halfway, somewhere between first period and seventh period, Mother Nature said hello. And that's right, Shelley began her monthly friend. Let's just say she was unprepared for her monthly friend, just about as unprepared as she was for her clean underwear. And by seventh period, those pink panties were tarnished, if you know what I mean. Well, Shelly was never one to really feel ashamed for her actions. She's a girl, woman of the 90s, and she went home, and instead of trying to hide the bloody underwear, she simply tossed them into the laundry basket and figured no one would come along and notice. Well, three days went by, and now she had a drawer full of clean underwear, and she had her pad in, and everything was going great. She was cleaned up, and she thought that she had gotten away with her actions of late. Well, she didn't, because Tammy came home, and while going through the dirty hamper, found the bloody underwear. She was livid. She marched up to Shelly and she said, I know you didn't get into my drawer and take my panties. And she said, I borrowed your panties. What? So what? She said, I know you didn't borrow my panties. That is disgusting. I would never borrow nobody's panties. That is sick. And, 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 and Shelly was like, it is not sick. And if I want to borrow your panties, I'm going to borrow your panties. And Tammy's like, you're not going to borrow my panties. She's like, if I want to borrow your panties, I'm going to borrow your panties. She said, you're not going to borrow my panties. If I want to borrow your panties, I'm going to borrow your panties. You're not going to borrow my panties. If I want to borrow your panties. And so basically, let's just say Tammy took matters quite into her own hands. That night, she, she went to her room. She didn't start a fight. There was a knock at Shelly's door. Shelly answered, what? It was Tammy. Could you follow me outside for a second? And so she followed her to the backyard. They went through the sliding glass door, and there, out on the lawn, was a picnic table, and on the top of the picnic table was every pair of Shelly's panties. Every one, just as pretty and laid out and pink and bowed and, and flowery as could be. And there 
was a bottle of ketchup right by it. Well, Tammy went around the table where she had laid out her cousin's panties, took the bottle of ketchup, and she said in a very dramatic godfather kind of way, this very vengeful way, she said, you ruined one pair of my panties? I ruined all of your panties! And she picked up the ketchup and <laughs> started squirting ketchup on every pair of Shelly's panties. <laughs> and Shelly's like, ah! <laughs> No! No! And she's so dramatic. And out comes Nigger White Opie. Was, well, his name was Charlie at this point because he was no, he was not yet the bodyguard of a of a go-go band. But he took the garden hose, he turned it on, and he turned it against his sister and his cousin to break up their fight as they rolled around in the yard. Uh.